Hi, welcome to How to Repair. Today we're at a campsite in northern Spain, about 150 kilometres away from Santander. It is one of the most stunning campsites that you could ever come across. I won't try and pronounce the name because my Spanish is so bad, so I'll put a link on the screen. Uh, you can see the mountain range that is behind us. And on the other side, we have an immense mountain range here. But what I wanted to show you, everyone here has been complaining that there is no hot water in the shower block, but yet the campsite has invested so much money in solar water technology, but someone has fitted it so badly. So let's go over to the solar panel array so I can explain what the problem is. The first problem that they got is the type of panels that they have had installed are really not correct for this altitude. The panels should be really, in my opinion, vacuum panels. And you can buy really affordable vacuum panels at hot solar water. Uh, I'll put the link in the description below, but that's not the main reason I'm actually doing this. Okay, we're here in front of the panels and I just want to explain some of the basic faults that I see. Now, of course, this is a campsite area. This means that you do not want items like this accessible to general public or children especially because some of this pipework can get exceedingly hot because they are so efficient, these panels, and especially at this altitude. They have put a guard area which if I come over here, you can see that they've put a fence to stop anyone actually touching any of the panels and protecting the panels. But these great big posts are actually putting shadows all day on the actual panels. And these shadows are losing calorific lift. When I say calorific lift, these panels absorb the sun and heat water inside or glycol inside the panel and then it goes through a pumping system and a heat exchanger in the water tank. So this is our first problem. The fence needs to be moved, but we also have a second problem. They have installed this on a beautiful shower block in a fantastic building which has got all the facilities for the campers, but this is over 20 meters away from the shower block. If you look at that door over there, you will see the shower block is over there. These panels could have easily been installed on a bracketing system up on the wall there because south is that direction and the panels would have had less uh, distance to pump the water or the glycol and also less loss in energy over distance. That is the first loss in energy. Uh, if you have shading on the panel, you are going to lose efficiency of the panel. And we're at approximately 16, 1700 meters up here, and every little drop of energy is important. But where the system is failing so badly, and the installation has been done so badly. Firstly, look at this insulation. This whole pipe is not insulated, and by the look of it, the actual pipe is going straight into the ground over to that door over there where the shower block is. The amount of energy that is being lost due to the ground absorbing this hot liquid that's being transferred to the, uh, to the tank is basically, I could never see how it works efficiently. It might have worked when they first installed it and the insulation was good, but over the last year or so, uh, you can see that the insulation has not been replaced. There is no trench work insulated trench work going to the shower block and in my honest opinion they have installed this in the wrong location. We could have easily fitted the panels up on the side of this building using a south facing wall to absorb all that energy and it would have only been a four or five meter run from the panels to the actual water tank where the heat exchange process works. Now let me quickly explain how these systems work. Panel systems are filled with a liquid and it's usually a mix of glycol and distilled water. At the other end, you have a water tank, which is normally two to 300 liters. This water tank has a heat exchanger inside it. Now the controller is connected via an NTC sensor on top of the panels. That NTC sensor tells the actual controller 
what the temperature is inside of these panels. The controller then will actually activate a pump. Now that pump may be a three-stage pump or it may be a variable pump. What this means is as long as the temperature, let's say the temperature is 40 degrees in the tank, as long as we have, a, say, a 10 degree differential, meaning that the water in these panels are somewhere in the region of 50 degrees, the controller will know the temperature and then activate the pump so that the temperature of the water being transferred to the tank is a constant 10 degrees or above the differential between the panels and the tank. Of course, if the tank gets to 60, 70 degrees, then the temperature in the panels needs to be 10 degrees higher than that. But all this energy is being lost because of the distance it's got to travel. The pipework has just been put into the ground. I mean, this should be, we're at 1600 meters. They should have dug a trench actually made fully insulated trench that's kept dry and therefore this liquid is transferred to the actual shower block. And the second problem I can show you straight away and if we use my thermal imaging camera on my phone and I haven't got my professional equipment with me so this will only give me a variant in temperature but let me just uh, show you this quickly. Here I can put my hand on it and it's stone cold. If I attempt to touch this at the top, it's 70, 80 degrees. And if I put my thermal imaging camera on and I try to get a mark on it, I can see that is somewhere in the region. Well, the sensor is only telling me it's 50 degrees, but if I put it down here, it's 12 degrees. In my opinion, the glycol in this pipework has been lost and it's been lost because the ground most probably and the corrosion is a leak on the system and therefore there is no liquid in the system. So these panels cannot do anything to the water tank and this is the problem. I mean if you're going to install solar water it must be done correctly and one of the only companies I ever use for all the solar systems that I've done in Portugal, Spain, even in the UK. The most important thing is to buy the right equipment and have it installed correctly. So many people are wasting their money because they have just installed good quality equipment but installed badly and in this case, they have actually misbought wrong equipment. Look at the shadowing on these panels at the moment. 50% of the panel is shaded. It's total madness. Anyway, I hope that helps anyone. Uh, I'll put some links in the description below. Uh, if anyone does need solar water, the one company I do recommend is Hot Solar Water. They all supply the right equipment to do the job. And in my opinion, up at this altitude, they should have installed vacuum panels to start with. And they should have put the panels on that wall over there on a mounting system. And then everyone in this campsite would have had hot water correctly.